Hey, did someone take my jersey? I put it, I put it in my bag. In your bag. I absolutely 100% put it in my bag. Break! Super Bowl 51, as the story like a fairy tale from this era, Tom Brady leads the New England Patriots to the biggest comeback in the history of the world's most prominent game, with New England trailing at one point to the Atlanta Falcons, 28-3. In 2017, the Patriots once again raised the Lombardi Trophy as world champions after that thrilling overtime victory. The game was so lopsided that late in the third quarter, the Falcons' chances of winning the game was 99.8%, adding even more magic to the allure of Tom Brady and the New England Patriots dynasty. Brady completed 43 of 62 passes for two touchdowns and 466 yards in Houston that day. His completions, attempts, and passing yards were all single-game Super Bowl records and enough for Brady to win MVP honors. Immediately following the victory, Tom Brady stripped off his white, sweat-soaked jersey still with the shoulder pads intact, handing it over to a Patriots equipment room employee who placed it in his locker located in the small visiting locker room of NRG Stadium. That February night was Tom Brady's fifth Super Bowl win and was extra special for Tom as he had been suspended for the first few games of the season from the deflate gate incident and was able to receive the Lombardi Trophy along with a congratulatory handshake from NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, a man he had gone face to face with a couple of weeks prior while defending himself from supposedly breaking the NFL rules. Post game, the typical rock solid Brady showed his emotional side, fighting off tears thinking of his mother, who had fought cancer and just was cleared a few days later to travel to Houston to see her son play for the first time that season. Brady would experience many emotions that night as the thrill and happiness of victory would soon be overcast by a bit of panic when a piece of memorabilia which was very important to him would turn up missing. For Tom, before the night of celebrating got too far along, Tom quickly arrived to the locker room via golf cart. And before the tight quarters overflowed with media and the rest of the team, Tom removed his jersey from the shoulder pads, folded it up, and placed it inside his black leather bag. Tom then retreated to the bathroom to wash his face and returned to his locker rather quickly and immediately noticed that his game jersey was missing. Tom asked the equipment staff if anyone took his jersey and with all the media now in the locker room, his words would be recorded by the many cameras filming and voice recorders running. I absolutely 100% put it in the bag. Tom Brady also voiced his concern to owner Robert Kraft, who at the time was waltzing around the locker room handing out cigars and had stopped in front of Brady's locker. Tom Brady stated that someone stole my game jersey. On Monday, during Tom's post-Super Bowl victory media tour, he casually mentioned that this wasn't the first time he had been a victim of a Super Bowl theft. Tom told Boston radio station WEEI that his jersey was also stolen following the Patriots' Super Bowl victory against the Seattle Seahawks a couple years prior. Tom was not out of just one, but two jerseys that he had worn in two of the most important moments of his life. Also on that morning following the Super Bowl, NFL security began questioning game day employees and those who were near the Patriots locker room the night before. However, no one had any pertinent information. The Patriots were also missing James White's football that he scored the game-winning touchdown with. The equipment staff searched the Patriots equipment truck, hoping both the jersey and ball would be inside and all would be well. The ball was found, however the jersey was not. By midday that Monday, the Houston Police Department filed a report from an accuser listed as Brady Tom, 6'4", 225 pounds and 39 years of age, for a stolen shirt slash blouse slash t-shirt valued at $500,000. Yes, 
a half of a million dollars. The summary on the bottom of the police paperwork read, on February 5th, 2017, the city of Houston hosted Super Bowl 51 in the NRG Stadium. Shortly after winning the game, New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady noticed his game jersey was missing from his locker in the Patriots' designated locker room. Soon, the U.S. statewide investigative law enforcement agency with statewide jurisdiction in Texas known as the Texas Rangers were assigned to the case via the Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick who said, In Texas, we place a very high value on hospitality and football. Tom Brady's jersey has great historical value and is already being called the most valuable NFL collectible ever. It will likely go into the Hall of Fame one day. It is important that history does not record that it was stolen in Texas. However, the city of Houston was not as concerned with the fact that a jersey was stolen on their own turf. I can tell you we had three homicides the night of the Super Bowl in the city of Houston, and we'd like to find it, but I don't think we're burning the midnight oil worrying about a jersey. But the Super Bowl was considered a level one event. The Department of Homeland Security's classification for an occasion of significant national or international importance, thus the jersey theft was not your typical stolen property case. The good thing about there being so many eyes and so many cameras rolling on an event of such magnitude is that Fox, who was the official national broadcast partner of the game, had three cameras recording in the locker room post-game. Also, the Patriots' in-house media crew had a camera that was rolling the entire time inside the locker room. You know, the Patriots always have cameras rolling, even when they aren't supposed to be sometimes. By the way, we have a video on that, on the Spygate scandal. You could check it out in the description down below, or you could just wait until the end of the video and it'll pop up in your end screen. Back to the content, luckily for the Patriots, one of the camera's lenses would be the one to point to who the theft was. Just one week and one day after the Super Bowl, there was a meeting scheduled back at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. In the room were six investigators, two from NFL security, two from Patriot security, and two from the Boston Police Department. The individuals were waiting for a USB drive that held hours of raw video footage from the night of the Patriots vs. Falcons Super Bowl. The USB drive arrived, but the members from the Houston Police Department did not as they were delayed to that meeting due to a winter storm pounding the Northeast and didn't make it to the Boston area until the next day. However, the six investigators sitting around the table on February 13th would discover footage and later a tip which would take the investigation of Tom Brady's number 12 Patriots jersey south of the border. It only took a couple of hours of watching film before the group had zeroed in on an individual, one person in the locker room before the doors were open to the media and that person was unknown to the Patriots staff. The video footage captured this suspect before and immediately following the theft, but not during the act. The crew then pulled all footage they could of the unknown individual, and at 9.51 p.m., the individual was a male wearing a dark suit who is taking a selfie with Patriots special teams captain Matthew Slater at the 50-yard line. 12 minutes later, he is right behind Bill Belichick and slides right into the locker room just behind Bill and Bill's significant other. At 10.08 p.m., the suspect passes right behind NFL staff and looks into a locker room security camera his long tie obstructing the credentials that he is wearing around his neck so his security clearance level is not visible. He had a large black messenger bag over his right shoulder and three minutes later, he is waiting against a wall. Seven minutes later, now the clock reads 10.18 p.m., the individual is exiting the locker room the same way he entered, but this time, he has something tucked under his left arm. An investigator who had viewed the footage stated after the fact that the suspect looked really relaxed. He looks like he belongs there. He has honed his skills over the years. Next, the investigators had to put the face with the name, which is easier said than done. The good thing about a Super Bowl is that each person's credentials is obtained from a request, which includes identifying documents such as a photo of each recipient and the organization or group he or she are with. The investigators knew that they were looking for a male who was at least 40 years old and white, but could possibly be Latino. For Super Bowl 51, there were over 20,000 people credentialed for that game. The description had narrowed the list down to about 800 males, starting at the letter A. The investigators finally reached a name, Martin Mauricio Ortega, a middle-aged director of a tabloid named La Prensa. 
that was based in Mexico City. Tom Brady, unaware of the in-depth investigation going on with the actual authorities at the same time, was conducting his own investigation in his own kind of humorous way. Tom had his own suspect board with printed pictures and descriptions. Next, there was actually a solid breakthrough in the case. One of the Boston investigators received a text that contained a photo of Tom Brady's jersey, the one from the Super Bowl where he had faced the Seattle Seahawks. The sender of the text was a Chicago area FBI agent who led investigations into sports memorabilia and fraud. The Chicago FBI agent had received a tip from a teenager by the name of Dylan Wagner, a Patriots fan who was living in Seattle. In December, Wagner sold a game-worn Dion Brandt jersey on eBay, and during that process, the buyer had sent several photos of his own vast collection that was very impressive, especially to Wagner. Wagner, being the Patriots fan he was, noticed a white Tom Brady jersey from Super Bowl 49 with grass stains that were an exact match to the one Brady had on that night, the night of the Patriots' Seahawks Super Bowl. You know, the game that Tom mentioned on the radio that he had his jersey stolen from as well? Wagner told the investigator that he asked the buyer how he got that Brady jersey, with the buyer saying something along the lines of, it was a lengthy story and one that would need to be shared another time. Wagner followed up with a message asking if the jersey was obtained legally. The buyer never replied. That buyer, who had shown a 19-year-old kid who happened to be really following the Patriots' stolen jersey saga a photo of a Tom Brady stolen jersey. This man was Martin Ortega. Ortega was an expert. He was buying and selling NFL memorabilia online since before the internet was even really the internet we know today. He had been at it since 1996, and many people who he sold to weren't too concerned with the source of the items or if the items had gone through the authentication process. When he came across those who needed authenticity, he simply did not sell it or co-sign it. However, some of the items he held were so unique and rare that they still had the sweat smell and grass stains, such as Tom Brady's jersey. Unfortunately for Ortega, that Super Bowl 51 Tom Brady jersey was now the talk of the media, and attempting to sell it would be far too risky for anyone. He did realize that and didn't attempt to hawk it, but what Ortega didn't know was that US investigators and NFL security were sniffing him out and were about to grab their passports and head down to Mexico. However, with crossing borders, things tend to get political, so it would also take getting the Federals involved in the process to recover stolen memorabilia. We had Ortega identify, but that wasn't the point, says a U.S. investigator who worked on the case. It was now the point of walking that political minefield as delicately as we could to appease everybody. We didn't want to upset the Mexican authorities. We didn't want to upset the Mexican people, and we didn't want to upset the U.S. embassy. Members of the Patriots security team just wanted the jerseys back. However, the Mexican government believed that Ortega should be charged with theft of the jersey and anything else he may have stolen on U.S. property. Also in the original report, the item was valued at $500,000. A theft of that magnitude in Mexico would carry at least four years in a Mexican prison. However, the question arose whether the jersey was worth that much in Mexico, and many believe that the value of an NFL jersey in Mexico is insignificant. Ortega would need to be charged in the United States, but extradition of a criminal from Mexico to the United States is typically for those who commit more severe crimes. Ortega may have committed the perfect crime so he would avoid any retribution. At 5.40 a.m. on March 12, 2017, Ortega answered the door of his Mexican suburban gated home, dressed in black sweatpants and a long-sleeved blue flannel shirt. It being so early in the morning that he was confused, but mostly shocked that there were several men donned in bulletproof vests and gray fatigues looking for him. His wife stood in the background as Ortega had a conversation with the authorities, a plea deal of some sort. The deal was Ortega was to hand over the Super Bowl jerseys and anything else he had stolen, and he wouldn't be sleeping in a Mexican jail for the night or longer. Ortega handed over a black trash bag to the police who documented the transaction via photos to prove that he did what he said. The agents didn't search his home, but did ask if he had anything else to relinquish. Ortega calling a friend who quickly came to his home with a large orange helmet with black marks on the side and a white Bronco head. That piece of memorabilia was Von Miller's helmet that he wore in Super Bowl 50. This is supposed to be the most secure environment of any sporting event in the world other than the Olympics. And some guy came and walked off with something valued at half a million dollars under the nose of NFL security, the Houston police chief said after the recovery. 
The United States investigators who were back at the embassy in Mexico City were satisfied with what their southern neighbors had delivered to them, along with what Mexico's FBI and the US officials used video footage from the Super Bowl to match up the jersey with what we seen to authenticate what was acquired from Ortega. Many of the Mexican investigators had not seen that Super Bowl, and many had never even watched the Super Bowl period. Thus, one investigator, upon watching the footage from after the Patriots' victory, said, I think they had a nice time. It was a very good game. As for Ortega, he was banned from NFL games for life and resigned from his job at the Mexican newspaper two days following the recovery of the jerseys and helmet. On March 17th, Jay Glazer, an NFL television personality, shows footage of the heist on the show The Herd. Jay Glazer elaborated that he was a major part of the Fox crew who uncovered who Ortega was, but that has not been confirmed by any authorities who worked on the case. On March 23rd, Tom Brady's jerseys were finally on their way back to him. Brady decided not to press charges against Martin Ortega. I didn't want anyone's life to be changed because of something like that. Everyone makes mistakes. We just hope that our mistakes don't leave permanent scars. I think mistakes that you learn from become real positives in your life. We do things with a lack of judgment sometimes, but when you learn from those, I think they can improve your life. Perhaps Tom Brady knows a thing or two about forgiveness. Robert Kraft had Tom Brady over on April 3rd, just before they were to attend the Red Sox opening day and presented him with both of his once thought to be lost Super Bowl jerseys. Then, the jerseys went on a tour as Tom threw out the first pitch on the Fenway mound, and as he was standing in the center of Boston's Faithful, he held up his number 12 jersey beside Robert Kraft and Rob Gronkowski, who were holding Super Bowl trophies. Gronkowski, like the adult 12-year-old he has always been, stole the jersey out of Tom's hands and headed in a run towards right field. Tom chased Rob and tackled him in the Kentucky Bluegrass. The two rolling around the grass like two blissful brothers giggling to the delight of Patriots fans. And once again, for that time being, all was well in Patriot Nation. That is, until our next story unfolds. I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.